How you guys doing today? Today I want to talk about five mistakes to avoid when fixing your credit during that process. So stay tuned. My name is Jay and welcome to Ask a Debt Collector, subsidiary of Clear and Strategic. Now I've been in the debt collection industry for over 15 years. I've done it all from management to owning two debt collection agencies. For the past 10 years, I've been the go-to guy for friends and family for questions regarding debt and credit. And now I wanna be that person for you. If you have any questions, pin them down in the comment section. I promise I'll answer those questions. For those of you who are new to this channel, be sure to like and subscribe. Let's go. Let's get right into it. The number one mistake to avoid when cleaning up your credit. Now this goes for if you're doing it on your own. Down below, I have a DIY credit repair packet. It's on sale. Click the link, opt in for that. Or if you're hiring an expert, which down below for 20, uh, you can get a free 20 minute consultation with me. If in fact you wanted to do that so we can vet each other and see if in fact we're a perfect fit to where I can take you if you're in the fours, the fives or the sixes and get you into the 700 club sign up for that and opt in for that. Now, whether you do either one of those options, the one thing that I always tell people to do uh, when fixing your credit to avoid is talking directly with debt collectors, right? Now, for me, that's sort of kind of a gray area. It's hard for me to understand because I've been in the debt collection industry for 15 years. But the thing you have to understand is, is when you're talking to a debt collector, his sole purpose and job is to get you to pay the debt. And a lot of them are trained with regards to answering any issue or any problem that you send to them to actually have a rebuttal or something to come back. One of the things that um, I learned in my debt collection journey was, was two things that would happen. And it's a battle between you and the consumer. At the time, we called you a debtor, but uh, now the politically correct way is to call you a consumer is either... They're going to convince you why they can't pay or you're going to convince them why they can. And that's what it boils down to with regards to that negotiation. And if you're brand new, chances are, you know, whether you owe a bunch of debt or you only have a little bit of debt, your experience with talking to a debt collector is going to be a lot harder. Every single question, every single answer that you come up with, they're going to combat you with a reason why you should pay. And a lot of times the better collectors, which was me in one of those back in those days would obviously get you to pay on something that a lot of times that you didn't even in fact want to pay whether they're using scare tactics or a lot of things along those ways so ultimately if you can avoid it don't talk directly with debt collectors the second thing that i always tell every single person to do is do not agree to anything with the debt collection company unless it is in writing you don't know how many consultations, how many credit um, clients that I've talked to and so forth who say, yeah, I talked to the debt collection agency. They're saying that they're willing to settle for whatever amount of money that it is, but I had to pay first before actually getting the arrangement letter. I say that it's a big red flag. Any debt collection company that won't give you something in writing, especially when you're whether you're agreeing to pay monthly for the balance on a specific date or some type of settlement, they don't give you something in writing first, that is a red flag. Now, being in the debt collection industry, I know that there has been times where I've seen collectors collect money on an account that was actually sold, but it was recently sold. So what ends up happening is, is they'll say, yeah, we'll accept the 50% settlement on your account. They'll take the money. They don't give you anything in writing. Then the account is obviously sold to another agency. They come after you. And a lot of times they'll come after you for that remaining balance. And so without something in writing first, showing that they agreed upon that, that helps protect you as a consumer in case that does happen, you can actually show a letter. Hey, I have an arrangement letter showing that they agreed to settle at the 50%. And I paid on this specific date and I have a record showing that I paid on this specific date. And that is why you don't do anything unless you have it in writing. Number three, a big thing uh, when you're repairing your credit, do not close any credit card accounts. I don't care if they're even maxed out old um, credit card accounts, because as you close out credit card accounts, then you lose that credit history with regards to that revolving account or even an installment account. But sometimes installment accounts, you can't do anything about it. But revolving accounts specifically, which are credit cards um, 
in particular, do not close out any of those accounts. You close out the account, you lose the history. Your credit history represents 35% of your um, FICO score, and by closing out accounts, it will affect your credit history, therefore affecting your score. The fourth mistake that I would tell every single person to avoid, and I get clients and this happens all the time, I tell them in the beginning, is pay all your bills on time especially the bills that are being reported on your credit report. Last thing you want to do is get a 30 day late payment um, on your credit profile because of those situations can drop your score 30 to 40 points. One late payment can drop you 30 to 40 points. So avoid having any late payments. During the process of cleaning your credit and fixing your credit, avoid having late payments. Pay everything that you have on time. Even if it's the minimum payment, just make sure you pay it and you pay it on time. And then the fifth and hugest thing with regards to uh, the mistakes to avoid when cleaning up your credit is getting more debt, right? So as you are fixing up your credit, one of the things we want to teach you um, when you go through us is, is we want to obviously delete inaccurate um, items off of your credit profile. But in the midst of that, we want to teach you how to build credit so that that way you don't come back. I always talk about when I first started cleaning up friends and family's credit, I wouldn't teach them anything. They would send their information over to me and I would just start the dispute process, get rid of a bunch of accounts that I get rid of that were inaccurate on their credit profile, get their FICO score back up to the, to the 700 club and then not teach them anything with regards to getting out of debt. And what happens, I had repeat people coming back because they didn't learn what to do in order to continue building credit and to avoid getting back into debt. So I'll clean up their credit, then all of a sudden they go apply, they get that $5,000 credit card, and because the habits weren't changed beforehand, all that does is enheighten their habits with regards to everything. And so it's important that you stay out of debt, and the only way to stay out of debt is to understand how to use credit, when you should use credit, and the best forms and methods to pay back that credit, so that that way you stay out of debt and you stay away from interest in general. Now, if you have any questions about credit or debt, put them down in the comment section. I promise I'll answer those questions. And as I always state, you be great.